Redskins and the Eagles. Stephen Davis, who is out today, and Trey Johnson out for the season. Two of the walking wounded of the Washington Redskins, and as Matt mentioned, Skip Hicks will start at running back, but we'll see Adrian Morrell as well as North Turner going with a mixture of those two backs. And the weather, very chilly and rainy all day yesterday, last night, and this morning, and it has cleared up miraculously, and it's a beautiful afternoon. Temperatures in the 50s as we get set to go. 16 of the last 18 games between these teams have been decided by seven points or less. So they're used to close battles. Nick, there's nothing better than a big game when both teams know each other and familiar. It always makes for great football. James Thrash is back deep as the Redskins will get the ball first. And David Akers, the former Redskin, kicking off to Thrash at the goal line. James Thrash down the sideline and is knocked out of bounds at the 26-yard line and slow getting up. For the Redskins offensively, Jeff George makes his third consecutive start at quarterback. There he comes after a superb game against the Rams last Monday night. On the offensive line, the strengths are the two tackles, the rookie Chris Samuels and John Jansen in his second year. The middle three are vulnerable, and they have been banged up. Skip Hips starts at running back. Connell and Thrash, the starting wide receivers, and Steven Alexander is the tight end. Alexander is in motion, and he started downfield too early. And there's a flag before the game. And uh, James Thrash pulling up lame on the opening kickoff. Yeah, they're just why I'm watching him on the sideline as well. But watch the end of this. He gets tackled from behind as he tries right there. And he's Ball walking start. on the sideline now. Number and he's testing that thing the whole time. Moving prior to the snap. And it looks like it hurts. Five-yard penalty. First down. And Thrash so important to the Redskins because of his pass-catching abilities and his return play. Yeah, he's feeling it and he's testing it right now. You always can tell when a guy's hurt and he's testing it because he says nothing to nobody else. He gets into his own little isolated world and tries to feel it out. Irving Fryer, who got banged up in the first meeting between these teams, comes out at wide receiver. First down and 15 following the penalty. And George dropping back to throw and out of the backfield is Skip Hicks on first down. He loses one defender and is stopped after a gain of about two yards. The Eagles' strength is their defense. And terrific pass rushing up front from Hugh Douglas, the veteran, and rookie Corey Simon at defensive tackle. The linebackers are Barry Gardner, Jeremiah Trotter, and Carlos Emmons. And a very solid secondary with Bobby Taylor and Troy Vincent at the corners, Damon Moore and Brian Dawkins at free safety. Second and eight. The handoff to Hicks going off the left side, spinning away, and a flag is down, and Hicks is tackled by Barry Gardner and about three yards shy of first down. And another penalty will be marked off against the Redskins. Tom White, the referee this afternoon. Holding. Number 83, offense, 10 yard penalty, remains second down. This penalty occurred at the line of the scrimmage. You watch Albert Connell working on the outside. You know, when you have a running back, here's the difference to remember. You're going to watch him right there on Bobby Taylor. It's just a wrestling match. When you have Stephen Davis running, when he likes to run between the tackles and what they call downhill running, you have to try to get in on your safety. Skip Hicks likes to bounce it outside and puts more pressure on your wide receivers having to block in space against your corners. Hicks, uh, Hicks has played well against the Eagles. But now it's second down and 18 from the 17-yard line, and another flag is thrown. This one may be against the defense, and the pass to Fryer is caught close to first down yardage. We'll see where they mark the ball, and it appeared to be a free play for the Redskins taking advantage of it. And Fryer is tackled right near the 35-yard line by Troy Vincent. That was kind of a funky play because it looked like Jeff George kind of slowed down and then realized that he was going to have a free play and then took his shot to Fryer, who incidentally, was it was a single-man route. He was the only guy out. 
to Irving Fryer, who played three years for the Philadelphia Eagles. Fifth all-time leading receiver. All sides. Number 90. Defense. Penalty is declined. Third down. So it'll be third down and about one. Corey Simon, the number one pick out of Florida State, who has had a outstanding rookie season at defensive tackle. So it'll be third down and one at the 34-yard line. And the play action, backpedaling is George, and the pass is ruled incomplete. It was intended for Steven Alexander, the tight end. So with third and one, the Redskins trying to pass on a screen play to the tight end fails, and they'll have to kick. And maybe that right there lets you know what Norv Turner and the coaching staff thinks about Skip Hicks in terms of short yardage. Because short yardage football still comes down to toughness, and you just have to be powerful. And maybe he just doesn't have the same confidence, because I know if Steven Davis was in there, it may have been a, a big handoff. You kind of figure it would have been. So Tommy Barnhart will punt, and Brian Mitchell, and another flag is down. So it has been a penalty-filled first possession of the game, and uh, David Terrell jumped outside working as a bullet. Whoa. And again, maybe not. Delay game. Defense, number 43, attempted to cause a false start by the outside. And that'll be a first down. Five-yard penalty. First down. And the Redskins offensive unit comes up. So for Andy Reid, a critical penalty against his defensive unit here. Watch Damon Moore outside, number 43. Okay, I'm watching. I'm watching. Oh, that, uh, let me tell you something. If this was the movie Animal House, they'd all be coughing right about now. <laughs> well, the Eagles, uh, not a good call. Moving up in class again to face the Redskins as Moore called for the penalty. So it'll be a first down at the 39-yard line. And James Thrash, who was injured on the opening kickoff, is in the game. And a fake end around. And on the screen, here is Skip Hicks with room to run. Hicks into Eagle territory. And down to about the 35-yard line, where Troy Vincent makes the tackle. So a gain of 24 yards after the penalty gave the Redskins new life. This is really well done. You see, first thing they do is they take Thrash, they motion him back, and that also brings a defender. And then because of one less defender, they also try to do the play action to pull it that side, and then it's just a dump off underneath, and then they use the speed of Skip Hicks. This is what Hicks brings, is a little more speed than does Steven Davis, and he's actually better in that open field area. So they didn't want to use the power with one yard to go, but use the speed here. On Moore, 43. Moore was underneath, Thrash just gave a little push underneath, got his separation, and was able to come up with a six. A 36-yard strike from George to Thrash. Now watch on the inside, watch Moore, watch his left hand right there. See the push? We see it, the officials didn't, it's six points. Well done, and a, actually the ball was underthrown. Every time James Thrash is out there, it seems like he makes a play. And this week, Jeff George, said that he may be the MVP of this offensive unit with all of the things he can do as a kick and punt return man and as a receiver. That is his second touchdown catch of the year. And now Eddie Murray is on for the extra point. A lot of ways to create separation. One is to run by, one is to push off. And it's never, always forget, don't ever forget rather, it's not a penalty until they call it. Well done by Thrash. Now Andy Reid over to talk to Tom White. While they're having discussion, the other part that needs to be mentioned in that whole thing was, was there was a lot of time for Jeff George to throw that football game. This play is not challengeable. Correct. You can't challenge. You wouldn't be able to challenge the call if, if in fact, that is. He's charged a timeout. Well, first of all, Tom White didn't mention what 
Yeah, he we don't know what he was trying to challenge. So no. Tom White should tell us what it is that uh, Andy Reid wants to challenge and tell the crowd as well. And then a timeout is charged to the Eagles. But if you can't challenge, you can't challenge why are you getting why charged you for a timeout? I'm sure there's a rule there. One I'm not aware of, and apparently either was uh, Coach Reed. Eddie Murray, who has probably seen everything in his career, the 44-year-old place kicker, connects. And it is now 7 to nothing. Jeff George getting good protection from his offensive line, hitting James Thrash and the Redskins. More quickly, seven to nothing. At the Super Bowl. And the White House and the beautiful isn't moving it? bands will be moving up there January 21st. I'm not so sure. If they can't vote one in, Dick, I'm not sure that guy's gonna move out. Wanna bet? Yeah, I gotta take some of that action. <laughs> so the Redskins take a seven to nothing lead, and what was critical on that. Scoring drive, Damon Moore's penalty on the fourth down punt. And the Eagles lose a timeout because you lose a timeout on a challenge. Yeah. And, and the time was called and uh, and they had to stop they the delayed game. the game. Yeah, and that, that actually is rule 15 throws the scoring at home. That's rule 15, section 9, article 2, coach's challenge. Whipped out my trusty rule book, but because the game was stopped. They will take the time out from them, even though it's not a challengeable call. Brian Mitchell, the former Redskin, who has returned a punt and a kickoff for a touchdown this year, awaiting the kickoff from Scott Bentley. Bentley, impressive with the onside kick, and he recovered the onside kick against the Rams last Monday night and is the just the kickoff kick. specialist. And in this league, where a game can change a season and a play can change a game, that very play and call right there, that onside kick, that could have changed this season around for the Washington Redskins. Bentley kicking off. It is a short kick, and Brian Mitchell on the run at the 17-yard line, and he is hit immediately. Good coverage by the Redskins, whose special teams, maligned all year, came alive. And LeVar Arrington may be shaken up. Yeah, well, this is another reason for everybody to get shaken up. Look at this right there. See the push off? That created the separation. And that separation turned into the touchdown. And that's what the Philadelphia Eagle coaching staff saw and tried to challenge. However, that would be a judgment call. They would not challenge that. Now, here's Arrington, who knocked down Mitchell with a great tackle. Hey, a nice, nice tackler right in the middle of the field. The guy who got up, however, was uh, Brian Mitchell, the former Redskin. And... Uh, LeVar Arrington looks like he got the worst of it. Boy, he's really come on too, Dick. At, uh, you can see it. I will give him about a year and a half to two years, and he's going to be he's going to be special. He's not there yet, but he's uh, he's well on his way. So Arrington is out of the game, and Daryl Green is in as the fifth defensive back for the Redskins. First and ten at the 29-yard line for Donovan McNabb. The Eagles trailing the Redskins 7-0. The pass underneath to Darnell Autry. And Autry picking up about five yards on the play. So McNabb, who leads his team in rushing and has completed over 57% of his passes in his second year at quarterback. And like the Redskins, the strength, the tackles. Trey Thomas and John Runyon on the offensive line. Autry, Cecil Martin, Taran Small, Charles Johnson. And Chad Lewis, the tight end, pressure put on McNabb, and he throws the ball incomplete. Another penalty marker is down, and that pass was intended for Chad Lewis. Nick, that was a good illustration of how Donovan McNabb is going to be an ineligible receiver down the field. But and as Donovan McNabb buys extra time with those feet, that X factor we said right at the start of the game. He just, he can make you miss, and he can buy that time. There is no ineligible lineman downfield on the play. Third down. Let's take a look now at the Redskins defensive unit. Bruce Smith, the NFC Defensive Player of the Week. A great game against the Rams. Stubblefield, Wilkinson, and Marco Coleman, who's having a big year. Sean Barber, Derek Smith, and Arrington. 
And we'll see if Arrington gets back in the game. Deion Sanders and Champ Bailey at the corners. Sam Shade and Mark Carrier, the safeties. Arrington suffering a bruised shoulder. There's, uh, there's Bruce Smith, who had the sacks in the safety the other night. Now, the significance of LeVar Arrington being out of the game with a mobile quarterback is, I believe, the Redskins would like to spy Donovan McNabb with, with uh, LeVar Arrington because he's got great speed. And there is Sean Barber, who's had a terrific year for the Redskins. Third down and five at the 34-yard line. Six defensive backs, and the pass is caught by Charles Johnson. And he is driven back, but the Eagles had enough for the first down. So McNabb hitting Johnson and a first down for the Eagles at the 40. Dick, like we said at the start of the game, they're going to have to throw back underneath. And if you're going to throw underneath, you better get well, any pass. You better get Bruce Smith blocked. That's a nice job by Trey Thomas. They were running a stunt to that side. They picked it up. Because they picked it up, they were able to find this back underneath Johnson for first. Lamar Arrington in the game at linebacker. First down and 10, and they hand off to Darnell Autry and loses yardage on the play. Autry starting today, and you remember Deuce Staley injured in week five with a foot injury. Yeah, because here's what happens. See, he's not Deuce Staley. Art Autry is not Deuce Staley. He's not bad, and he's got to find himself. But what you cannot do, Dick, is you can't just eliminate the run because, well, we have no running backs. You have to stay with it, and then you can also use the short passing game in place of some runs. So it's been a running back by committee, and they've spread it around. Second down and 10 at the 40. McNabb trying to get out of trouble, and there's Bruce Smith lunging forward to make the tackle, limiting McNabb to a gain of only one. This is just a good job of change of direction because he's going to work on Trey Thomas, and Thomas is perfect. Good job. Get the hands on him. Now, when McNabb comes back underneath, that's nothing more than just, you know, coming off your block. It's a good job by Bruce Smith, but also Trey Thomas did a good job of blocking. Bruce Smith with three sacks against the Rams, including one that resulted in a safety, bringing up third down and nine on the Eagle 41. Nay Brown, number 85, in as a third wide receiver. An empty backfield and the pass thrown underneath to Johnson. And he'll be stopped at the 44, well short of the first down by Sean Barber. And the Eagles will have to kick. The you Eagle fans sitting at home and you're sitting here saying, why isn't he pushing down the ball down the field? Two reasons. First of all, you're going to try to establish that underneath thing because that's what you do well. Secondly, the Washington Redskins corners, they have an advantage against your wide receivers. So you'll take your shot every now and then but he's going to be patient with that passing game underneath all game long. Fourth down and Sean Landetta, the veteran punter, will be kicking to James Thrash. And he bobbles the ball. A muff. And they battle for the loose ball. And the crowd holding its collective breaths, waiting for this call. Oh, there's a lot of fighting going on in there. And the scrum is on. You know, when I was in umpire school this year, they said you jump right in. That's a good body official. They knocked the hat off. Good job. You jump right in and you start pulling them out. That's the ump can. Let's see what he's looking at. Just a bunch of elbows, knees, and rear ends. What he's looking for is the ball in there someplace. There's a. It's still going on. And the Eagles have recovered. The Philadelphia Eagles recover on the muffed punt by James Thrash and will have the ball at about the 10-yard line of the Redskins. A critical error by James Thrash. You can see right at the end, he almost looked it in, and at the last second, his eyes went to the, the people who were coming down on him. And I believe Mike Bartram, number 88, right in back of Mike Sellers, recovered the fumble for the Eagles. See how his eyes came up thick? That was the difference in the play. And then it was just a, like you said, it was a scrum. But Sellers should have had the ball. So the Eagles now in great field position on the Redskin 11-yard line. Trailing Washington 7-0. McNabb is going to run with it to the 5 and slides to about the 3. Well, you watch the pregame show, and Howie Long had an excellent piece. And because one of the things he brought up and Howie would how he brought it out of Andy Reid, as you, as you can watch. Sean Barber oh, Sean leaving. Sean Barber, that's, oh, that's big. Because he's, 
He's he's played outstanding for this defense. And he's the cover guy. And now Arrington and both those backers are out. But getting back to what Howie, Howie understands what an offensive line mentality is, and that's what Andy Reid has brought to this offense. LeVar Arrington has checked in now for that. Eddie Mason checks into the game, and here is a play-action pass, and it's a touchdown to Jeff Thomason, but there's a flag down. So let's wait. Jeff Thomason, one of the three tight ends with the touchdown catch, but the penalty flag is down, and the preliminary signal is it's against the Redskins. 12 men. Defense. Penalty is declined. Touchdown. So James Thrash, who bobbled the punt, allows the Eagles to go in quickly to make it 7-6. to six. Well, they have themselves their 12-man defense. This isn't a good sign if you can't stop it. It's a good job here of Thomason. They salt, sell the fake to the left. It's really tough. Play action's tough on goal line. Play action's tough, but it was well done by McNabb, and Thomason's able to sneak out and get a six. 16th touchdown pass by McNabb, and now David Akers for the extra point. And his kick is good. Line drive variety to tie it up. So a silence crowd here with 8.16 to go in the first quarter. The turnover giving the Eagles a chance, and Thomason with a touchdown reception. We're all even. And there is Mike Bartram alertly recovering the muff by James Thrash. It is not a turnover, but is a big mistake by the Redskins. I don't, I'm not so sure Bartram didn't just steal that thing out of Sellers' hands. There was a major scrum going on down there. Akers kicking off, and there is Thrash at the goal line. James Thrash, and he is hit and dropped at about the 15-yard line by Mike Caldwell. So good special teams coverage. And the Redskins do not have good field position. We'll be right back. I want you to watch the muff by James Thrash and what happens. Sellers is down here. Remember, he fell on top of the ball. He has his left hand right there and trying to control the ball. Bartram has his left hand on the ball, but his right hand right here is trying to fight to get it. Now, there's a huge scrum, but I want you to watch right down here. There goes the hand inside. He's almost there. And once he gets it in, now he pulls it out and he clears it. All the other stuff is window dressing, but Bartram stole the ball. The Redskins in a 7-7 game on first down, and a ball pops free, incomplete, intended for Stephen Alexander. So a couple of critical plays leading to touchdowns. First, Damon Moore's penalty on fourth down. Offsides giving the Redskins a first down, and then the touchdown pass. And this one, of course, they tried to challenge, and they lost the timeout because it was a push-off. And then, of course, the muff that we just documented, and a good job by Bartram of stealing that thing, which, of course, led to the Thomason touchdown. And it was not a fumble, but a muff, because Thrash never had possession of that kickoff. So it's second down and 10. Handoff up the middle to Hicks. Fumbles. And the Redskins come in and retain possession. A very impressive recovery by Keith Sims, the oh, yeah. left guard. Yeah, he was going to make sure any, he was going to make sure no one took the ball out of his hand. Now watch Hicks. This is what he does. He'll get the hole and he likes to bounce it outside. Who he bounced into was a host of Philadelphia Eagle tacklers, and a ball popped out. And then Sims on the other end. Look at that. It was a free lunch. You know, it's interesting. We have a clear day now. The sun is out. The field's in great shape. We had rain this morning when you may think you may have turnovers then, but we're having it with great conditions. I today. know one thing right now. I know James Thrash is raining on the inside because that was a tough one. Third down and six, and the Redskins will call a timeout. Yes, James Thrash has been a hero and a goat so far with a touchdown catch and a muff kickoff return, and we're tied 7-7 midway through the first quarter. Well, Sunday is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. By Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar for a taste that is as American as Applebee's. By Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And by DirecTV, the number one digital satellite entertainment provider. Back here, it's third down and six at the 21-yard line. Andre Reed in the game for the first time at wide receiver, number 84. Jeff George with the pass, and it's incomplete and intercepted. And it's Troy Vincent on the pick. And Mike Caldwell 
was in on Baldwin as a penalty marker down as well. James Thrash was the intended receiver. And now they're going to call roughing the passer against the Eagles in what has been a penalty-filled first quarter. Nothing can ruin a game more and the flow of a game than the flag. Flag gets everybody out of sync. It gets the offense and defense out of sync and it interjects the officials. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Number 90. That's Corey Simon. You're going to watch him work into the inside right. Oh, nice move. Very nice move. And it's. And me personally, my football sense, that's, that's bad call. He pushed George down and gets called for it. So the. Rookie for the Eagles committing the penalty. So the Eagles committing two penalties. One would have given him the ball in Redskin territory. The other one would have forced the Redskins to punt. So Washington with a first and 10 on their 36 yard line. And hand off up the middle to Skip Hicks. And he gets about three yards on the play. And right now, for but they haven't played consistently and they're going to start to down the stretch. Second down and six from the 40 yard line in a tie game and there is Hicks and he gets by Hugh Douglas and finally he is uh, stopped by Carlos Emmons and along with David Moore after a minimal gain actually a loss of three yards on the play Nick, this Philadelphia Eagle defense I, I think they had a, they had an excellent starting point and then I think they've gotten better and better each week there's Jimmy Johnson their defensive coordinator I like what he does the other Jimmy Johnson the other Jimmy Johnson yeah <laughs> Yeah, but he he understands what he's trying to get done with his people and he has fit them into the puzzle very very well Personally, I think it starts right here with these two guys on the inside second in the NFL against the pass Jeff George in the shotgun and a stutter count flags are down and now they're going to blow the play dead I don't remember a game with more penalties in the first eight or nine minutes of a game than I've seen here today brutal like I said, it ruins the flow of the game. As a play caller, it ruins the flow of you trying to call a Outside. game. Offsides, number 59, defense, unabated to the quarterback. It's a five-yard penalty. Mike Mamula. Remains third down. Unabated, he was being blocked. Missing that one, too. You know what? I'm going to go back to my, uh, going to go back to my animal house thing and <laughs> I would be coughing a whole bunch. I hope you don't have Let to say that too you. many times today. Because oh, smoke doesn't bode well. <laughs> so as a result of the penalty, it's third down and four. Here is Jeff George, and George's pass is caught by Alexander, and he gets the first down, and he was down by contact, so no fumble on the play. Middle linebacker Jeremiah Trotter on the play, so the Redskins... Get a first down. Jeff George, the quarterback today, and this is his third start, but interesting, talking to Norv Turner yesterday, he said, next week I'll have to make a decision. It isn't automatic that Brad Johnson will come back at quarterback if he's totally healthy. He says, if I think Jeff George has played well, Jeff George could remain a quarterback of this team, and that's a surprise in, of sorts. Yeah, I would think it would be a surprise. First down and the pass out on the flat intended for Adrian Morrell is incomplete. I think the one part of Jeff George's game that he's not real comfortable with is the underneath throwing. I don't think he likes to dump the ball off. I think he's a vertical guy. I think Terry Bradshaw was talking about that in our pregame show. And he's 100% right. And so when you have that and you try to put the short game back in, one way the play caller, in this case Norv Turner, one way he can control that is by not throwing or not calling a lot of deep routes. He can control it by just keeping it underneath. The problem with that, though, Dick, is it shrinks your field. Eight of the first 11 plays from scrimmage have been passing plays. Not this one, however, as Adrian Morell gets a couple, bringing up a third down and long at midfield. Interestingly enough, the backup quarterback today is Brad Johnson, who has had a sprained knee. So if uh, anything happens to Jeff George, if he gets hurt or if he has to be taken out of the game, Brad Johnson would be the backup quarterback with Todd Husak, the third quarterback. Third down and seven at midfield for the Redskins. We're tied 7-7, nearly four minutes to go in the first quarter. Oh, 
Out of the shotgun, Jeff George stepping up, and the pass incomplete. And it was intended for Fryer, who got hit and uh, could not hold on to the ball. And it was in the first meeting between these teams that Tim Houck had hit Fryer and knocked him out of the game with a bruised neck. Well, you know it's third and long. You know what they're not going to do is they're not going to let the fast receivers, in this case Connell, get down the field fast. They were playing their zone. A nice job right there by the Philadelphia Eagles and Al Harris getting the jam, forcing him outside, disrupting the timing. You take him out of it and force him to come back underneath. Brian Mitchell is back deep for the Eagles, and Tommy Barnhart will punt for the Redskins. Go! Fair catch, the call by Mitchell at the 10-yard line. So we're tied 7-7 in a penalty-filled first quarter, which has hurt the Eagles more than the Redskins. Seven, half the field in the sunshine, the other half in shade here with a few minutes to go in the first quarter and here you can see the penalties today penalty yardage almost even 25 penalties and 26 by the offense so it'll be first and 10 at the 10 yard line for the Eagles long count by Donovan McNabb and hands off to Darnell Autry and coming in to make the play was Dana Stubblefield and a loss of three. Well, we have great action next week as the season really begins to heat up. Fox NFL Sunday begins with a pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. The Giants and the Redskins in a game that could be for first place next week as well. And we're getting down to the nitty gritty in this season, man. This is when football's fun. Second down and 13, Stanley Pritchett into the game at running back, and he dives forward for a few, but it will be third down and long for the Eagles, deep in their own territory with under three minutes to go in the opening quarter. Now both these defenses, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Washington Redskins defenses, have an advantage with their corners. All the corners on the field are, are better players than the people they're playing against as receivers. So they enjoy an advantage where that really has some play is in a situation like this. Todd Pinkston, the rookie wide receiver, checks in for the Eagles on third and seven, and this pass is knocked away, intended for Charles Johnson and Deion Sanders, who played a major role in the victory Monday night against the Rams with the hit there, bringing up fourth down. That's, that's a perfect example. What, what are they going to try to do? They're going to clear here and then drive the inside to that area. And Deion Sanders sees it. He's playing through the man to the ball, and he's letting the ball come to him, and you just make your break. And that's what I was talking about. That's a great illustration of you, know, you being the better player. And Sean Landetta with another penalty marker down, and his kick will go out of bounds, just getting into a Redskin territory. So there is Dion, one of the high-priced additions to the Redskins this year. And I think a, a good addition. I don't think there's any question. He's allowed Ray Rhodes to call defenses that they normally would not have been able to. Now, Deion Sanders is not what he was, Dick. I don't think there's any question about that, but he's still, he's still so high above the standard. And eligible member of the kicking team, number 57, was downfield. Penalty is declined. Take the result of the play. First down. So yet another penalty. And the Philadelphia Eagles, last time they were in first place this late in the season, Buddy Ryan was the head coach back in 1989. The Eagles wound up 11-5 and, and lost in the wild card game to the Rams. Keith Byers, Randall Cunningham, the defense led the NFL with 56 takeaways and set a team record with 62 sacks. This team comes into the game third in the NFL in sacks. So they have made great strides in the last couple of years under Andy Reid. First down and Jeff George giving to Skip Hicks. And a one-yard game for Hicks as we check in with James Brown for a game break. JB? Hey, Dick and Matt, take it now, Dick and Matt. And a very interesting development there, playing without Jeff Blake and Ricky Williams, the Saints, playing for a share of the lead in the NFC West. Second down and nine, just short of midfield for the Redskins, and George on the play-action pass completes it 
but for no gain on the play as Larry Centers is hit by Carlos Evans. And right now, let's check in with a third member of our team, Pam Oliver. Pam? All right, Dick. I've been watching LeVar Arrington here on the sideline for the last 10, 15 minutes, and he still seems to be shaken up. The Redskins say he has a bruised shoulder, but Arrington has been holding his head the entire time. It seems that collision with Brian Mitchell has taken some sort of toll on him. Back to you. All right, Pam. Thank you very much. And here is the hit that sent him to the sidelines. And you can watch it just it was right off the kickoff and here come Arrington and bang right there head first and down he goes and he's talking about his shoulder but I'm watching him and he's trying to clear some cobwebs out of that noggin is Sean Barber suffered a cut on his arm he went inside and there is the quick pass and the pressure on Jeff George and he fired it away Albert Connell was the intended receiver covered by Brian Dawkins and Dawkins actually on the safety Dawkins blitz. Dawkins came with that blitz. Yes, he did, and he got some pressure, and that's a good call by Jimmy Johnson. That's knowing when to call it and taking your shot. Well done. And, and what he does so well is he just brings numbers. It's just about, they kept five in, they brought six. You can't block them. Dawkins missing three games with an appendectomy, including the first meeting between these clubs. So it's fourth down, and Tommy Barnhart will be kicking. Brian Mitchell back deep. Mitchell, they're catching at the 20-yard line with 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Well, America's fastest sport is now coming to Fox starting in February 2001. Fox Sports and FX are the places to turn for every pit stop, lap, and checkered flag. It all begins this February with the 43rd running of the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. Fox Sports and FX, the new homes of NASCAR. And how exciting that's going to be for fans of auto racing all over the country, man. That, that thing's just grown and grown and grown. I see more flags of NASCAR people all over the country, don't we? Yes, we do. Here's the flip to Autry trying to go outside and slowing him up with Sam Shade. <laughs> the fact that I have seen more more NASCAR flags than, than this football game is thrown today. That's I don't think you have. A lot of flags. Are you sure? I pretty based on what I've seen so far in this game, yes. Final seconds with under a half a minute remaining. Second down and eight for the Eagles. A couple of major mistakes influencing this first quarter. And Dick, the longer this game goes, as it goes into the game, the third quarter, fourth quarter, that's close. That's an advantage for those Philadelphia Eagles. Now the up pan, and the umpire sees Donovan McNabb. Second down and eight. This could be the last play of the first quarter. McNabb taking off and going out of bounds. And that will do it. So that is the end of the first quarter here. As the Redskins and the Eagles are all tied up 7-7. Seven and seven. And Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages. Start of the second quarter, Dick Stockton, Matt Millen, and Pam Oliver. Sean Barber back on the field, had a cut arm, and uh, that has been bandaged. And LeVar Arrington remains on the sideline after he was injured. Third down and six. Six defensive backs in there for the Redskins. Ryan Mitchell, the third down back. And former skin is in there, and there is McNabb's pass complete to Johnson. Trying to get the yardage for the first down, and he has it up to the 32-yard line. Champ Bailey on the defense. Well, they're throwing against that zone, but the first thing that had to happen, you have to block Bruce Smith, and you have to give him time. So watch Brian Mitchell. He's going to make sure he doesn't go to the high road. And then Trey Thomas holds the inside. And because they had the time to throw, you can watch Charles Johnson just set right down inside in that zone. Greg Jones... Uh, in an outside linebacker in Arrington's position. First and 10 at the 32-yard line, and here is McNabb who tries to swing it out to Darnell Autry with no success. Just watching this Philadelphia Eagle offensive line, the strength of the two offensive tackles. I think Runyon's got a, I think he kind of hit a little lull just watching the last few games on, on tape. He's, the last few weeks, he's hit a little speed bump pick his game up a little bit so far he's doing well against Marco Coleman the inside three however that's where they could have an advantage these Washington Redskins defense second and ten pressure put on McNabb and McNabb will take off and as Andy Reid says as McNabb goes out of bounds and may have the first down Andy Reid told us yesterday 
that Donovan McNabb could be a running back in this league very easily. He picks up nine. Well, he just talks about his great athletic ability and his, and his vision and his great feet. You can, as you watch this thing, keep in mind that you break down, and as the quarterback breaks into those zones, you know, it's about space, and it becomes about angles. Well, McNabb has that same feel. He's, he's pretty good with angles, and he'll outrun you. He'll outrun the angles. Coming in at the, as a leading rusher for the Eagles, and he has scored four touchdowns on the run. So it's third down and one, and a pass play by the Eagles. It's deflected, and it's caught, and it'll be a first down. It's Luther Broughton, one of the tight ends, in the right place at the right time, off the deflection, picks up six yards, and a first down. Did you watch him at the end, kind of threw his hands up, said, hey, I guess it's going to work. Marco Coleman working out there as he worked off of Broughton, got his hands up, and got into McNabb's face, and the, as the ball came up off his hand, Brought, watch Broughton, who had, earlier he had just thrown, <laughs> makes the catch, and then when he gets up, he gives it, puts his hand in the air like, eh, I guess that's the way it's going to be. This team spreads it around. Ten different receivers caught balls last week against Arizona. On first down, here is Donovan McNabb downfield, and the first downfield attempt, this to Johnson, who is well covered by Champ Bailey. One thing what happens in this league, you know, there's one thing to be blocked, there's another thing to be stay blocked, to, to stay blocked. Marco Coleman has a really good motor. You're going to watch working against John Runyon, just fight, 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 and then just keep on coming. I, I always have admired his game from that standpoint because Marco Coleman has one of those John Randall type motors. He just keeps on going and going and going, and that part doesn't require a talent. Leads the Redskins with a career high, nine and a half sacks to this point. Second and ten, a running play to Stanley Pritchett. And Pritchett getting close to midfield will bring up third down and long. That was a Cecil Martin on the carry, so third and long coming up. Seven seven the score Jeff George hitting James Thrash with a 36 yard touchdown pass McNabb with a short toss to Thomason for the score ninth play of the drive third down and seven McNabb getting time drills it in the pass caught by Tarn Small and his first catch of the day gives the Eagles a first down and about the 30 yard line Bailey on the coverage and a gain of 18. Well, that's not going to happen unless this man right here, Brian Mitchell, picks up the blitz. Nice job coming back inside on Sean Barber and stays right with him. And you know, and he knows him from playing with him, he stayed after him. And because of that, you can watch Small got to the inside of Champ Bailey at the time. Nice pickup by Mitchell. Nice pickup by Small. Talk about so many things a player does for his team. Complete. First and 10 at the 32-yard line of the Redskins. Right now. And Coy Detmer Washington. coming into the game at quarterback. And McNabb was also in the game as a running back. And a timeout is called by the Redskins. So whatever that maneuver did, it caused the Redskins to call a timeout. It confused them. It's to melt from Taco Bell. Melted to perfection. And this is the Supreme Court, and uh, this is an interesting city to be in in these times. As the Redskins call a timeout, their first of this first half, the 10th play of the drive coming up as McNabb back in there and Stanley Pritchett going outside. And uh, Sean Barber back in the game knocks him out of bounds. Nick, a little trick we are in the last one. Here's Donovan McNabb right here. And so what they do, right at the end, they sneak right here. You see that number 10 right there? They sneak Coy Detmer in. The interesting thing, you can see him, he's right here. The guy who called the play, however, was McNabb. And then he went out to become a wide receiver. That forced the Redskins to have to take a timeout. Second down and five, McNabb looking to throw. And he goes underneath as a penalty flag is thrown. And lunging for the extra yardage is Stanley Pritchett. And he would have a first down pending another penalty. And this will go against the Eagles. It appears to be illegal hands against Philadelphia. Illegal use of the hands to face number 76. It's a 10-yard penalty. 
remains second down. John Wilburn, the left guard of a good offensive line that the Eagles are sporting. And they've got more solid. They need to get better here on the inside three. I don't think there's any question about that. But what they've done so far in this game is they've done a good job. You can see that right in that hand to the face that they're going to call, especially in the end. He just stayed with it as well. They just need to get better and more cohesive. And that penalty knocks the Eagles farther away from a possible field goal try. Second down and 15. Pressure on McNabb. Running away from pressure and turning on the Jets. Going downfield and leaps over a defender and a blocker and has a first down. And it was Jermaine Mayberry who was leading the way for Donovan McNabb who runs 26 yards for a first down. Watch Bruce Smith. He comes clean. He's going to get hit by Dan Wilkinson right there and that's the difference that allowed that allowed McNabb to get clean and then watch the end of this thing this is why Andy Reid says he could be a running back in this league because he has the instincts he can follow his blocks he's just very athletic so the ability to run the ball causing headaches for Ray Rhodes the former Eagle head coach and now the defensive coordinator for the Redskins First and ten at the 11 yard line. McNabb stepping up and his pass and it is caught at the six by Chad Lewis the tight end. Let's check in quickly with James Brown in Los Angeles. One of them. Turley's another one. Naoli's another. And they're going against that Ram defense that's really struggling. And on the road at that. Meanwhile second down and five at the six and the pitch is to Darnell Autry. And the Eagles have not been able to muster much of a running game with Quatry, the chief ball carrier. Sean Barber on the tackle. So Ray Rhodes, who has done a tremendous job turning around this Redskin defense after being coach of the year with the Eagles back in 95. Now Ray has done some good things. I don't think there's any question about it, but he also has the advantage of having some good players brought in here as well. But they've really bought into what he does. The least of which, of course, has been Bruce Smith. Brown on its feet, third down and five. And the pass swung out to Stanley Pritchett, but it was behind him and no chance to get close. Matt Stevens, defending on the play, makes the tackle. It'll be fourth down, and the Eagles will try to take a lead with their field goal team. Good job by Matt Stevens of knowing his coverage and jumping it right away because what you don't want to do is have a guy get head up on you and have a two-way go in the open field. So you want to close that from the inside out and give him one way to go and just run him down. So here is Akers who played one game with the Redskins two seasons ago. Now will attempt a 27-yard field goal and the kick is good and the Eagles have taken a 10 to 7 lead after trailing in the first quarter 7 to nothing and we'll be right back their first lead a long drive 15 plays but only three points out of it on acres 27 yard field goal but the eagles will take it keeping what is always a close battle between these teams the eagles beating new orleans losing to washington and two setbacks to the giants they have not played many teams with winning records, and this is their toughest test of the year. Akers kicking off, and James Thrash is back deep. Handles this one. Thrash up to the 25 and is tackled at the 33-yard line by Mike Caldwell. And we'll take a timeout with 8.04 remaining in the second. Hugh Douglas on the left, Chris Samuels on the right. Now the first time these two teams met, Hugh Douglas had himself two sacks. This time, Chris Samuels was not going to let that happen. And so he's played him very physically. And Hugh can play very physical. And he'll try to bull rush. In fact, that's what he did the last time, just trying to set the tone. Douglas also has himself a very good motor dick. He'll keep on coming. But he's shorter than Samuels, and he likes to get in the inside of his chest and power him. Having his best year at... 13 sacks leading the NFC is Douglas against the impressive rookie. First and 10 at the 33 yard line. Adrian Morrell checking in and running back and the screen pass to Morrell. And Morrell brings it out to the 41 yard line, about nine yards on the play with Mike Mamula downfield for the stop. I see Adrian Morrell in this offense is best when you can get him out of space. Because sometimes what he isn't is he's not very patient with his blockers. But if you can get him out and give him field to work with, that's when he's been very quick 
He can be explosive. And, and if he can dunk the ball and get in his hands in space, like we said, he's most effective. So Morrell comes out and Skip Hicks comes he's in the game right. as Dorf Turner using those two with Stephen Davis on the sidelines. And here is the play and the best play off the left side. Going outside is Hicks' bread and butter. He gets eight yards and a first down to midfield. Albert Cotto getting up slow, but this, this play doesn't happen. This previous play doesn't happen unless Chris Samuels allows him to get the edge. Now, he showed you the physical part in the pass game. Here it is in the run game. Nicely done. Gets into him, engulfs him, and then allows him to get the corner. And then, of course, on the outside, Albert Connell is working against Bobby Taylor, and he just gets, just gets mauled a little bit. Irving Pryor replaces uh, the shaken up Albert Connell. First down at midfield. Play action for Jeff George looking downfield. Now being chased from behind. And he gets away and fires downfield and overthrows James Thrash. He was chased by Hameter. Yuhura Hameter was chasing Jeff George and miraculously got away from him. Well, all this is going on. Thrash is working down the field. Now he sees, you know, they weren't going to push it deep, but once he sees it, he starts to go deep. And then Alexander, of course, is working on Emmons. They're sitting there in the zone trying to find the hole. And then once Thrash sees that he's in trouble, he goes vertical, and the ball's a little overthrown. Had the right idea, though. Jeff George with an impressive escape act. Incomplete, second down and 10, and there is a flea flicker. Morell going back to Jeff George, and nowhere to go downfield, and finally is tackled Paul Grasmanis, and a gain of eight yards on the play. And uh, they almost got the first down. The Redskins come up about two and a half yards short. Connell testing his uh, problem, and uh, he has no catches today. On that, on that, he got hurt on that run right at the end of the play. Remember, he was trying to block Bobby Taylor, and he got rolled up on there by Jeremiah Trotter. You know, when you try those flea flickers and all those kind of moves that we saw in this last play, that goes back to discipline of defense. And, and that time, uh, Dawkins did a great job of, of keeping his discipline. Third down and two. Flag is down. Jeff George's pass. And James Thrash is there for the catch. And a first down if the penalty is against Philadelphia. But the initial call holding against the Redskins, and that will nullify the first down. Place has more flags than the United Nations. <laughs> Holy smokes. I hate games like this. I hate it playing Holding. in a... Number 63. Offense. It's a 10-yard penalty. Remains third down. This is Keith Sims working on the inside. You're going to watch him right here. Working against Hollis Thomas. I wouldn't say that's a hold. I would say pretty much he's just hugging him. <laughs> We're friendly. You just That's Again. actually an old veteran move. And in the week of Thanksgiving, I think he was just trying to just show his appreciation. You know, he said you hate games with a lot of fun. Who likes games with these many penalties? <laughs> Not I said the thing. <laughs> Third down and 12 back in Redskin territory at their 48-yard line. Another penalty marker down, and Jeff George has his pass picked off by Bobby Taylor. Al Harris, make it Al Harris and going toward the end zone. <laughs> the Redskins recover inside the five. A man possessed was Irving Fryer downfield. Larry centers right in the middle of all of that. Irving, this is going to come back. Carlos Simmons jumped at the start. Then there's the pick, and it's going to go back. The Redskins are going to get it back. The Redskins get the ball back there, but it's going to be nullified all the way in the front end. But Irving Fryer, who came under some criticism on the Monday night game here against Tennessee for stopping on that interception at the end, was not going to let it happen again. Offsides, number 51, defense. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains third down. Boy, there's, there's, there's the hit by Dawkins. They brought it. Then Harris, watch this. Bang! Oh, I love it. I love it. I love the fact that he didn't quit. I love the fact that he showed up. Watch Tom White trying to get out of the way. He saw it coming. Harris didn't. But Tom White did. Pretty good move by Tom White. In the open field. I like the fact that Irvin Fryer was not going to let it happen again. He, 
knowing in the back of your mind those plays always play through. And so the penalty, the play was exciting, but it didn't really happen as Evans was called for the flag. So the Eagles penalty gives the Redskins third down and seven on the Eagles 47 yard line. George out of the shotgun and here comes major pressure on Jeff George and he's forced to throw it away and the Eagles sent everybody. I like what Jim Johnson is doing here with his defense. Nice calculated risk. He's going to get he's going to bring numbers. He's just going to bring more guys than you can block. There's going to be somebody free and he's doing it in, in a situation to force Jeff George to have to make a quick decision. Eagles are leading 10 to 7. And again, the former Redskin, Brian Mitchell, goes back deep. Matt, this game is nothing new no. to this rivalry. This is what this rivalry has been about for years. Familiarity with each other. And there is Barnhart with the kick. And Mitchell will let it bounce. And the Redskins will keep it in play at the one-yard line. David Terrell with a great special teams hustle. And the ball will be placed on the one-yard line when we come back to the nation's capital in just a moment. Blockers on this side of the ball. The Philadelphia Eagles are going to bring seven men. That means there's going to be one guy unaccounted for. And here he is. It's Jeremiah Trotter right up inside. Jim Johnson saying, if I bring the extra guy and we get there, you have to force the ball quick. Excellent decision by Johnson. That's the chess game going on, but now the Eagles will start from the one-yard line. McNabb with a short drop with a pump fake and going up top, and the pass is intercepted by Champ Bailey. Bailey with the pick. And the Redskins will get it back. Remember the first game, there were two... Two bad interceptions thrown by McNabb. That really was the difference in the game. Of course, they ended with Darrell Green on a pick. This one right here, they tried to double move to the outside, but they were sitting in the zone. So you're not going to bite on it. He tried to throw a deep. Champ Bailey, watch, never bit. Champ Bailey had more depth. And this goes back to earlier what we said, Dick, that the advantage for both these clubs lies with the corners in their defense. Charles Johnson was the intended receiver. He became the tackler. So Bailey with interceptions in successive weeks for the Redskins. And a first down. Skip Hicks. Maybe a yard. And right now, let's check in with Pam Oliver. All right, Dick, here's what we know about Albert Connell. As you saw, he was taken to the locker room where he's being evaluated. The Redskins tell me he has a bruised knee, and his return is uncertain. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you very much. And here is the injury to Connell. Who's working on the inside, remember, on, on, on the outside, rather, against Bobby Taylor when he got rolled up on by Jeremiah Trotter. That, of course, led this as Al Bellamy takes him into the uh, into the locker room. And you pointed out that uh, James Thrash is still uh, limping a bit from his injury. Irving Fryer, who got knocked out of the first game between these teams with a bruised neck. Thrash is in there on second and ten. And the pitch is to Hicks going outside. That's his specialty. And he is knocked out of bounds. About seven yards shy of the first down by Carlos Emmons. You're not going to get that edge unless there's somebody out there giving it to you. In this case, Larry Sanders is there. Larry, Sen Larry Sanders, I love. I mean, if I had a team, a whole team of Larry Sanders, I would, we'd win the Super Bowl every year because he's unselfish, understands the game, he's smart, gives you effort all the time, he's complete, he'll block, he'll catch, he'll play special team, he'll do it all. I think the world of Larry Sanders. One of the great receivers out of the backfield in NFL history. Third down and five. Pressure again on Jeff George. And the flag is down, downfield. And Thrash covered by Al Harris. But the pressure put on Brian Dawkins with another blitz. That's going to be on Al Harris. Boris Cheeks was right there. The side judge was right on top of it. Read it right from the start. It was a double move. And Harris, uh, Harris got his hands on him. Again, this goes back to numbers. You're going to bring the extra man and force the quarterback to have to see it. Dawkins comes. He's right there. Caldwell is there as well. But watch this. Outside. There's the double move. Stop and go. 
and that bump is what they saw, and that's what they're going to call. And it can't do it beyond five yards, and so a pass interference penalty of 12 yards will give the Redskins a first down at the 19-yard line of Philadelphia. So we have had nine penalties in this first half. From the 19, Adrian Morrell in the game, but a play-action pass set up by George, and he throws the ball. for a touchdown and that was a laser thrown by George. It was a la laser that was thrown behind and what happened was Steven Alexander knew where the ball was and, and Tim Hopp didn't. Hopp played the man instead of the ball and what happened was it was almost like a fade stop but it's not a fade stop it's what it is it's an underthrown ball. Watch Steven Alexander work to the outside. Now he's going to break to the outside the ball is going to be thrown back here. See, Hauk is anticipating this, but because the ball is thrown behind him, he can't get there. And Eddie Murray, who missed an extra point but kicked four field goals on Monday night, makes good again. And the Eagles, who had a 10-7 lead, now trail the Redskins as Jeff George, with his second touchdown pass of the game to Alexander, gives the Redskins the lead, 14-10. And the touchdown pass to Steven Alexander, his second touchdown catch of the year. There is the scoring drive by the Redskins. You know what I like to see, Dick? That Champ Bailey interception for a young defender. That was all about discipline and understanding the scheme, and I like that. I like when they try to get you on something like a double move, but you know your role and you play it. Short kick off from Bentley to Brian Mitchell. Brian Mitchell looking for a return, and he's hit at the 35-yard line by Mike Sellers. Well, next catch the best professional figure skaters in the world. Brian Boitano, countering of it, headline a field of Olympic and world champions. It's round two of the Grand Slam Super Teams of Skating coming up next right here on Fox. So check your local listings for the start time in your area. Well, the Eagles trying to keep pace and win a big one and retain their lead in the NFC East. Donovan McNabb, his passing numbers, he had a 26-yard run and is their rushing leader. Charles Johnson has caught three passes. At the 35-yard line for Philadelphia, play action. And McNabb looking up, and he flips it. Good touch that time, and the pass is caught by Chad Lewis who has caught more passes as a tight end than any other man in his position in the NFC. Good for 28 yards. Remember at the start of the game, Dick, we said that McNabb's feet would be the X factor because they would be able to rush for yards, but he'd also be able to buy time. This is option B, buying time. And especially effective when you know, those feet are coupled with your eyes and you can buy that time and find the holes in the zone. Eagles on the Redskin 38-yard line. Two and a half to go in the first half. And here's McNabb, and he has sacked Greg Jones, who replaced LeVar Arrington, an outside linebacker, and a loss of three yards for McNabb. Well, you keep three into one side, and you bring the fourth. Again, this goes back to, uh, to Ray Rhodes. He's doing the same thing. He's probably listening to this, and he's saying, you know what, I'm not going to let him get up on me. You're going to watch Greg Jones. He comes. This the receiver on the outside would have had to have been the hot receiver unless he had to pick him up, which he didn't. Just ran right by it, and Jones gets a sack. You think Ray's listening to your broadcast? Yeah, I, yeah, I always does. Lamar Arrington just sitting there doing nothing. Second down think. and 13. Protection this time for McNabb, who drills it, and the pass is caught. So they get about five or six yards back. Back, Nay Brown with the catch, his first of the day. And the two-minute warning with 153 remaining in the half. Report JB, Terry, Howie, and Chris with scores and highlights from around the league. And our Fox Sports ticker will have up to the second stats. That's all coming up on the Visa Halftime Report. The Eagles trying to make it four in a row for the first time in four years. Trailing 14 to 10, the two-minute warning. Third down and four coming up at the Redskin 32. And the handoff to Stanley Pritchett going outside, but the Redskins are there. Led by Matt Stevens coming up from the secondary. I wouldn't be surprised if they go for it here on fourth down, Dick. 
Andy Reid who led the Eagles to five wins last year in his first year as head coach and now with fourth down and two coming up the Eagles as you uh, go for it now Studley said would go for it here defensively you have to really be aware of Donovan Donovan McNabb's feet and so it wouldn't surprise me if they put the spy on him right here fourth down and two and McNabb gets hit and a free ball and it's recovered by Sean Barber I believe of the Redskins he's got it it was Marco Coleman who got to McNabb forcing the fumble and Barber recovers for the Redskins and they get it back with 106 remaining as the Eagles deciding to go for it on fourth down and two and it would have been a long field goal for Akers to be fair well he's just going to work back on the outside on Runyon and Runyon just lost his feet Runyon lost his feet and Coleman just beat him to the corner now that's that's not about coverage that's not about anything other than Marco Coleman and great hustle and again Runyon just stopped his feet and tried to force him beyond that was all she wrote second turnover by the Eagles the Redskins on their 38 yard line they have one timeout remaining and Jeff George with plenty of time gets it out to Larry centers on a crossing pattern goes out of bounds and stops the clock with a minute remaining Marco Coleman's had a bunch of sacks like you said career high I think that's number 10 for the season but so much of what he's done this year has been his motor and the other part of it has been Bruce Smith on the other side because you know there's there always going to be something coming your way as well that one had nothing to do with Smith that had everything to do with Marco Coleman so now the Redskins offense trying to get in position to increase their four point lead second down and six George on the right flat to Steven Alexander and the Redskins tight end goes out of bounds on the Eagle 48 yard line It'll be a first down with 54 seconds to go. Alexander, who caught a touchdown pass here in the second quarter. Dick, remember at the start of the game, we said that Steven Alexander should probably have himself a pretty good game because of this and because of the fact that they don't enjoy a nice matchup outside versus these eagle corners. So you have to take advantage of things underneath. And in effect, both teams really do. Sure. So it's first down at the 48. 54 seconds to go. Pressure being put on Jeff George. He has thrashed downfield, and the ball is knocked away. Thrash covered downfield by Damon Moore and Al Harris. And 47 seconds remain in the first half. Well, they've faked the blitz out here to the outside. See, the back comes and it gets it gets picked up. And then he tried that pump move again to try to get him down the field. They like this double move on the outside, and it's on Harris. They've tried it a few times. They must think he bites. Moore does a good job of getting over there, but it should have been a catch. The ball was there. You have to catch that ball. Second down and 10 at the 48-yard line for the Redskins with 47 seconds to go and one timeout left. Short drop and the ball batted up and knocked down by Hammeter of the Eagles who bring up third down. You know, just watching these corners outside, uh, of these Philadelphia Eagles the guy right there as Troy Vincent I think Troy Vincent when he walks up in his physical I think he's pretty good he gets a little soft sometimes but when he's up on you and uses his hands I think he's I think this defense is better and I think he plays better two solid corners with Bobby Taylor on the other side and a good pass rush thus second in the lead in pass defense third down and ten and uh, three flags are thrown. The Lewinberg jump, but also the Philadelphia Eagle right defensive side jumped as well. It'll go against the Redskins, apparently. And they know, the, the, the Redskins know that those two corners. False start. Number 57, offense moving prior to snap. The five yard penalty remains third down. Taylor and Vincent are the dominant players. So they get them to one side, and then they have Harris to the other side, and they're trying to take advantage of him. This is what's affectionately known as lineman jumping jacks. Yes, right there. <laughs> See, they can't, even, they, don't, they can't even get their arms to the side. They just have to clap to keep cadence. That's Jay Lewinberg bringing up third down and 15. The shuffle pass to Irving Fryer. 
And he gets buried in midfield, bringing up a curious fourth call. down with 34 seconds, and the clock continues to run. Andy Reid, an old offensive lineman. Not yeah. so old, really, but a, a former offensive lineman. Former offensive lineman, and he coaches that way. He doesn't give his team anything more than it can handle. I think he's a good coach. I think he's done an excellent job. I think he's got a, a good way about himself on the sideline. controls his team. And they don't have to run the play, and the Redskins uh, do this. not want to risk uh, punting the ball. And they got seven and five. You could just let this one go, and, and that's the end of the half. Run back, and so uh, they'll let the clock run out. Close. That's what they played all these years. That is the end of the first half with the score. The Redskins 14 and the Eagles 10. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. matchups with their wide receivers versus the corners. Neither team does. And so both of them have to be able to throw underneath. But McNabb's feet again become the X factor. Jeff George with two touchdown passes did find Thrash for 36 yards and Alexander for 19. As the Eagles will get the ball to start the second half. Brian Mitchell is back deep and Scott Bentley will kick off for the Redskins who won the initial meeting 17 to 14 back in week six. Now this ball will bounce and go into the end zone for a touchback. Let's check in right now with Pam Oliver. All right, Dick, talk to both coaches at halftime. Half time. First of all, Andy Reid, he said offensively he wants to try to strike a better balance on the offense with the run and the pass. As for Norv Turner, he feels Donovan McNabb is killing them. He says we have to keep some type of containment for the for for McNabb. As for the injury updates, Albert Connell is done for the day with that bruised knee and the LeVar Arrington situation remains a mystery. The Redskins will not update his condition or whether or not he'll return. Back to you. All right, Pam, a lot on your plate <laughs> at halftime. Right there. Well done. There's the rushing story. McNabb with more yardage than all of the other rushes combined on both teams. And the first pass is low to Torrance Small, bringing up second down and 10. So if you're the Philadelphia Eagles, Andy Reid, what do you do? And I think the answer to that is simple. You stay with what you've been doing. You're only down by four points. Defensively, you're playing pretty well. I think you have to count on the fact that your quarterback's going to make some plays that you can't count on. McNabb, 11 of 16 for 87 yards, a touchdown pass, and an interception thrown. McNabb getting some time. And he Goes to his tight end, Jeff Thomason, on a crossing pattern. And a, a pickup of four yards with Sean Barber on the tackle. I think Sean Barber has played very, very well this year. I think he's I think he's become a you know one of the better players of this defense, actually one of the better linebackers in this league. He has good coverage skills. He's not a real big guy. You have to hide him a little bit, but he has a good feel in man-to-man -man coverage in his zones. I think he's been a Really big surprise, not surprise, a pleasant surprise in how he's developed this year. And he came out of camp that way. Third down and six. McNabb trying to get away from trouble. And he throws the ball away. In fact, he throws it into the stands. So just going to the sideline wasn't enough. He threw it into the stands as a Wilkinson and Coleman try to chase down McNabb. Well, well Dick, he had to because there was no place to throw the football. Working on the outside, Charles Johnson and Daryl Green. Daryl Green's going to turn him back over to the safety. Then the safety comes over to the top. On the top side, Deion Sanders, same thing. Again, he's turning him over to a safety. You see him sitting there. And because those zones underneath are so tight, just leave it in the stands. Fourth down, and Sean Landetta will kick from about the 10-yard line. James Go Thrash goes back deep for the Redskins. Rash with a fair catch at the 36-yard line. So the Redskins defense holds the Eagles, and now they get the ball for the first time in the second half. The Capitol building in Washington, the Redskins leading 14 to 10 with their first possession of the second half. Start from the 36-yard line, and Skip Hicks picking up about four yards on the play. Well, Pam reported just a few moments ago that the Redskins did not reveal what LeVar Arrington's injury was, and now they have. He has a concussion and is out for the game. It was just right at the start of the game. It was just Brian Mitchell's shoulder into the noggin and uh, got himself some cobwebs. Now, I would venture to say that, you know, 
10 years ago, LeVar Arrington might be back in there, but with all the things that have gone on in this league with concussions, I think this is a good thing. I think they're a little more cautious, and he takes his seat where he belongs. So Arrington out for the game, as is Albert Connell with the bruised knee, as Pam also reported. Second down and six, a fake handoff, and the pass by Jeff George is incomplete. Brandon Whiting putting the chase on Jeff George on the pass intended for Fryer. Every time they've tried to run that waggle action and, and run that receiver across the field, he's been picked up every time. Very well done in terms of coverage. Watch this Brian Dawkins, and he's, he's just got that trail all the way down. Now, the next step in this route is with the tight end where they start him, and then they work back against it, and they use your anticipation against you. Third down and six. The Redskins have not been very successful on third down conversions to this point. Hit George in trouble, and down he goes. The sack by Mike Mamula. At one point, considered an undersized defensive end, but he retains his position and a loss of seven yards on the sack. Well, he had to hold on to They tried to run a pick down on this side, but because it wasn't there, see, he tried to see it right there. What didn't happen? Whiting got some good pressure to the inside, then Mamula got off the edge and made the sack. First time today that the Eagles have gotten to Jeff George, forcing the Redskins to kick. Tommy Barnhart will boot it away, and Brian Mitchell back deep. Good. Brian Mitchell, dangerous return man, has not been able to unleash one today, and won't hear as he is ruled down by contact at the 26-yard line by Mike Sellers. Brian Mitchell's going to try to tell him that his knee never hit the ground. Officials have a different idea, however. So each team has had the ball one time here in the third quarter with the Redskins up by four. The Eagles with the ball on the 26-yard line, trailing 14-10. to 10. The Eagles have... Played well on the road this year. They've won four of their first six away from Veteran Stadium. Donovan McNair. Always a threat to run with the ball. And this pass is caught by Chad Lewis in a gain of about eight. Yeah, and that eight yards, this is what Brian Mitchell thought he had because he said his knee never hit the ground. And you know what? It never did hit the ground. His knee didn't, but look up here. He, his elbow did. And once the elbow's down, as you can clearly see, it's a great picture by our Fox cameras. His elbow's right there. See, elbow on the ground, down right there. Second and two on the 34. And a running play to Darnell Autry. He fumbles and alertly picks up the loose ball. So you can see where the Eagles don't have uh, nearly the running game they had when Deuce Staley was healthy. And that's why they have a running back by committee. Yeah, they can have committee, but if you can't block Dan Wilkinson like this right here, I don't care who's carrying a football. Because Dan Wilkinson just blew up the inside. There was no place to go with that football. Wilkinson just decided to take his spot and go hard up the field and forced Autry to come back inside. Third down and four. Here is McNabb, and he's going to run and get the first down as he slides at the 40-yard line. So there's that McNabb again, who picks up eight yards and has 54 yards rushing to Nick, lead everybody at this point. This goes back to what I said earlier. You have to count on the thing you can't count on. And what I mean by that is the, the coaching staff, so you can't account for it because you never know when it's going to happen. You can't count on that part. But you can count on the fact that he's going to do that. You just don't know where it's going to be or how it's going to happen. And they don't call running plays for it. No, no, they go ahead and trust his instinct. McNabb directing Stanley Pritchett. And on the fake handoff, there's a design rollout and the pass through the hands of Chad Lewis. Incomplete. You know, you look at Donovan McNabb and you can see he's a work in progress, but you can see what he does so well. He's decisive. He's reminiscent of Randall Cunningham. I think the difference is he's a little further along than Randall was at his stage, but they can move him out of the pocket and throw. He can just take off and run in the broken and open field, which he does so well. And of course, when all else fails, just try to go vertical. <laughs> he's got it all. I think he's further along than Randall was, though. I really do. And the Eagles are farther along, too. There's the pitch to Stanley Pritchett off the left side with a head of steam. And 
Pritchett to the 46 yard line about three and a half yards shy of the first down with Sam Shade on the stop. And I think Dick I think the reason that he's further along than Randall Cunningham was has more to do with Andy Reid because I think Andy Reid has tailored this offense to what his players can do. And I think that's a compliment to both Reid and to McNabb. I think there's a better match there in scheme than may, maybe what they had had earlier with Randall Cunningham. Third down and three at the 46-yard line. Two tight ends with Lewis and Broughton. Broughton went in motion for McNabb. And McNabb is not going to get anywhere. And Marco Coleman collapsed the pocket as McNabb started to run. And that will be a loss of one and the third sack of the game by the Redskins and the second by Coleman. Well, these defenders, these defensive people up front, they better they better turn around and, and kiss their secondary. Because he was looking for the crossing receiver first, and then also Chad Lewis, Charles Johnson wasn't there. They were all well covered, and he had to eat it. So it is fourth down. James Thrash goes back for the Redskins, and Sean Landetta will kick. Landetta, the veteran the kicker, and there is Thrash, and he is hit immediately and goes nowhere. Deron Sherry on the special teams tackle. We'll be right back. At stake today, first place in the NFC East. The Eagles leading by half a game over the Redskins and the Giants. All three teams have the same amount of losses, however, four. Giants play at Arizona tonight. First and 10 from the 20 and a loose ball and a fumble. And the Eagles pick it up and it's Dawkins. It went through several players' legs, and no one could find it, and Brian Dawkins recovers at the 21 of Washington. That ball just popped right out of his hands, popped up into the air, and then flopped around. I don't know if Jeff George ever had his hand on it or not, but you're going to watch it here. It went right through his hands, went right through his hands and popped up in the air. Nobody even knew where it was except for Dawkins. He entertained thoughts of trying to pick it up, but instead was smart and fell on it. He never even had control of it, like the ball went right through. Now look at Jeff George's eyes. You know he has, look at him, look how big they got. Oh, no! He knew when that happened. So a first down at the 21-yard line. Stanley Pritchett is the running back. On the 21-yard line, and here is McNabb going around Bruce Smith, who misses him. McNabb with a great fake, gets to the five-yard line and scores! What a run by McNabb! You think he can't be a running back in this league? And remember early, hey, Andy Reid sandbagged us. Andy Reid says, we don't like to call running plays with him. He said, I won't call him. Wrong. Wrong again. 21-yard run by Donovan McNabb. He got by Smith and then did the rest himself with a great moves. Well, Bruce Smith does all he can. That's Watch this cutback, though. Dude. Watch the cutback in the open field using the angle against him. Oh, nice move. Nice move on Mark Carrier, and then power, Matt Stevens, six points. So, Aker is on for the extra point, and the turnover haunts the Redskins. And Donovan McNabb running it from 21 yards out, a little behind the back, and a little finger roll for Donovan McNabb as the Eagles regain the... It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL, an official airline of the Super Bowl. By Fidelity, all the expertise, service, and technology to help you see yourself succeeding. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. The Eagles regain the lead thanks to Donovan McNabb using his legs, as he has so often this year, coming in as the leading rusher for the Eagles. And the kickoff by David Akers. James Thrash running up for the return at the 22-yard line, and Thrash gets to the 32-yard line. First thing that you're going to watch is this fake. There's going to be a fake hard inside, and it's just going to give Bruce Smith just that little bite. See that bite right there? That allows McNabb to get the edge. Now you need some help from your friends. Watch to the outside. It's going to be a block by Small. You saw him flash. Well done. Then a fake. Here's the block by Small. Get your hands on him, allow him to come inside. Now, you turn it over to one man. It has to be a move. He beats Carrier and then power into the end zone. Fifth touchdown running for Donovan McNabb this year. First down at the 31-yard line. 
And here is Jeff George, and he completes the pass to Thrash and has the first down. So McNabb with five touchdowns rushing. And now with 74 yards in the game, and that amounts to a career high for Donovan McNabb. And the fifth TD score by an Eagles quarterback, the most since Randall Cunningham in 1992. But really the story of it, a mistake, a turnover, setting up yet another touchdown in the game. First and 10 in the 41-yard line for the Redskins. Quiet crowd here with 8.20 to go in the third. And plenty of time for George. A flag is down on the pass intended for Irving Fryer thrown behind him. And that will be pass interference called against the Eagles. And the Redskins will get a first down in Philadelphia territory. Eagles are just beating themselves today. Illegal contact. Number 54 defense. It's a five-yard penalty. It's an automatic first down. Jeremiah Trotter, the middle linebacker. So another costly penalty against the Eagles in the first one. Ultimately resulted in a Redskin touchdown. Well, you have five yards to get your jam, and past five yards, you're, you know, they're going to throw the flag. And there is, there's Alexander. He's more than five down the field, and that's what they're going to call. You almost wonder who's going to make the last mistake in this game to cost the team the game. That's a great point. First down at the 46, pressure put on George, and he gets the pass off to Larry Centers. He bobbled it, but maintained possession and picks up three. Jim Johnson, again, rolls the bones, comes with a blitz to the outside and forces the ball to come fast. You know, when you do that, when you when you blitz like that and you force the... You're, what you're doing is you're... You're going to bring numbers. They're going to hit you in the mouth and get a sack. Or they're going to force you to have to go to your hot read. And if you have good coverage, it's going to be a minimal game because you're not going to have time to be able to push it down the field. Second and seven. Here is Adrian Morrell getting running room. Adrian Morrell, who had not carried the ball in six games, and a flag is down after the play is over, gets 10 that time and a first down to the... Eagle 41 pending another flag. Going to go against the Eagles again. This is ridiculous. Face mask penalty called against the Eagles, and so they'll mark off more yardage. A little bit of, little bit of movement on the outside. Adrian Morrell, nice move. And he missed his face mask completely. It was a collar. That's the phantom call. They're coughing again. Coughing again in that Animal House court scene. I knew you'd come back to that. <laughs> they missed it. Missed it completely. So Morell and Hicks playing with Stephen Davis on the sideline with the hairline fracture in his arm. Redskins at the Eagle, 36-yard line. Crash going in motion to the left. George looking right, completes to Alexander, who was hit at the 30-yard line that time by Emmons. Carlos Simmons, we called his name a couple of times. You look at Stephen Davis eating his seeds. Emmons is primarily going to be responsible for Stephen Alexander on the outside. And uh, that time they did, he got his separation, and the ball comes out pretty quick. But that uh, Carlos Simmons has actually played pretty well over the tight ends. He's not not giving him a lot of room. There you see Alexander lining up. In the slot to the right now center a lot of motion by the Redskins and the handoff to Adrian Morrell. Good tackle by Grasmanis right there. No gain will bring up third down and about four. The reason that's a, that's a good tackle because they came with a blitz again Dick which means that it put him into man coverage and if you block the guy responsible for that he's off and running. They came with the blitz now watch Grasmanis came off the block. Looked like either Cal looked like Caldwell would have been responsible, and a blocker was on him. Grasmanis, nicely done. Third down and four. Redskins were leading 14 to 10 at the half. The Eagles with the go-ahead touchdown. And Jeff George out to Irving Fryer, and a first down at the 20-yard line. So what happens, Dick? If you don't have wide receivers who can get there. And, and can beat the corners, then you have to try to create something. So see what they do, they're gonna bring him across, and they're gonna have the two outside guys just kind of have a shield 
so that Urban Fryer can get to the outside. If he can't beat you with pure speed, then you use scheme to free him up. That's, that's good coaching by North Turner. Ball control, an even story today. In their first meeting, the Redskins had it for over 36 minutes. But it's another close battle between these teams. First down at the 20-yard line, and George, trying to get away from a sack, has his pass knocked down by Hammeter. Hammeter knocked it down, but the play really was made inside by Corey Simon, the rookie. An impressive rookie, I might add. He's got himself a few sacks, but he's really playing well inside. You see, he just goes with the top arm over. That's just good, pure quickness. And Hugh Douglas uh, really has uh, been a great influence for Corey Simon. Yeah, and Corey Simon has a good personality, too. And he understands his role, and he's a hard-working kid. He's got a bright future. Second down and 10, and it's going to be a running play to Morrell trying to cut up field and is stopped. Again for no game. So this game turning into a defensive battle here in the second half. There's another one there that Jeremiah Trotter talked about young players. You know, Ray Rhodes actually, Ray Rhodes is the guy who drafted him. Yes. Ray Rhodes really liked Jeremiah Trotter. And as I watch him on tape, there are some things he does very well. Very aggressive. He's tough. He's tough at the point. He just needs to play a little bit more. He's not there. He needs to really believe his eyes and his reads. And once he gets that down, he's going to be even tougher. Third down and 10. And Jeff George completes to Larry Sinners and knocked out of bounds. So a big third down and long play by the Redskins. And a pickup of 15 yards and a first down inside the 10 and close to the 5. That is on the offensive line. They gave him time to be able to find his Larry Sinners out here. See this? That's on his zone. And because of that zone, it takes time to develop through the zone. You have to have time to throw. You can look at the protection. Jeff George had the time, which allowed both centers and he to find that spot. Redskins first and goal at the six in a seesaw game, trying to regain the lead. Here is Morrell, and Adrian Morrell charges down to about the four-yard line. Philadelphia Eagles, you know, they've said that they've been able to run on them. But they've been tough in there. They have not yes, they given. Have. They've grudgingly given up yards. Yeah, that's a that's a good job by that whole front seven. They're not dropping an extra guy down there. They're handling it with their front seven. Well, you see the running story today, yes. and you're right. The Redskins with only 45 yards on 15 carries, three yards a carry. That's pretty good. Andy Heck reports as a tight end. It'll be second and goal at the four yard line. It's a running play, and Adrian Morrell goes nowhere. Rasmus is right there again. You know, he had an injured knee and early in the week, questionable as to whether he would play, but he has stuffed the run on this drive. Former Chicago Bears should hurt his knee every week because he's really <laughs> playing well in there. Did a good job of staying nice and low, coming off the ball, and sets up this third down. Now, see, I always like play action at least on second down. Third down, you know you have to throw. Ball is at the five-yard line. Jeff George already with two touchdown passes today. Sounds like Larry Sinners. George with some pressure swings it out to Sinners, and the Eagles are there. And the pass slightly behind Larry Sinners coming out of the backfield. Damon Moore and Brian Dawkins will force the Redskins to go for a field goal in their attempts to tie the game. That's well done by Dawkins out there. They're just going to try to swing him right away. S swing him right away, and they're just going to try to get some kind of a pick, but it didn't happen. Well done by Dawkins, and, and well done by Moore of coming off of his coverage. That's really good. 26-yard field goal attempt by Eddie Murray. And Murray's kick is good to tie the game. So Murray, the 44-year-old who kicked four Monday night, ties the game at 17. 17-17 the score with 2.16 remaining in the third quarter as the Redskins, who have won six of their last eight games. Trying to move into first place. There is the scoring drive. 12 plays, 62 yards, and it was the field goal by Murray to tie the game. Here is the kickoff by Bentley. Brian Mitchell backed up to the goal line. Mitchell straight ahead. But the Redskins are there. They have not allowed Brian Mitchell to break one today. 
Well, tonight on an all-new episode of The X-Files, a desolate town, a horrifying ritual, a bizarre cult, and Scully is about to become their next victim. Get ready for a new episode of The X-Files tonight at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. Yuck. Sounds like the... Sounds like the base of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Meanwhile, uh, Brian Mitchell has just passed Barry Sanders for career combined yards in the NFL. Pretty good company with Walter Payton and Jerry Rice ahead of him. From the 28-yard line, Darnell Autry breaking one. And Autry with a first down and more getting to the 42-yard line and chased out of bounds. Gaining 15, and right now let's check in with James with that St. Louis defense. Oh, there's no question, and uh, and I think you have to compliment what uh, New Orleans has done offensively, especially with Brooks, the quarterback. On first down, the pass thrown underneath and caught by Chad Lewis for a gain of about four yards. You know, it's been a pretty quiet DK relatively for Bruce Smith, and I think you have to compliment Trey Thomas. He's gotten after him, he's been talking to him, and he's been physical with him the whole day. And I think that's what you have to do. Look at him. You can even see Trey Thomas. He's saying, okay, come on, bring it on. Even when he's been able to use his speed, McNabb's been able to nullify that. Well, the Eagles have not been the counterpunchers today. They have led with the jab very often this afternoon. Second down and five, rolling out and being chased. And the pass is caught short of the first down by four yards by Cecil Martin, the fullback. Amazing that McNabb would get rid of it. He was about to be sacked, and the catch was terrific. Well, they did a good. They just brought the safety. You can watch. He just he's free, and he just all it is is just again. It's all about his feet. It's all about speed. It's a pretty good throw too because Sean Barber was right on top. Under a half a minute remaining in the third quarter, right near midfield, third and four. And McNabb, and open is Autry. He'll get the first down, and still on his feet, and does not get out of bounds. The clock continues to run as Sam Shade makes the tackle, but an 18-yard pickup to the Redskins 33 as time runs out. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score, the Eagles 17 and the Redskins 17. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after a word from your local Fox station. Quarter and again the importance of this game the winner moves into first place and by beating St. Louis on Monday night the Redskins holding the cards knowing they have the Eagles at home this week and the Giants at home next week who they've already beaten on the road but this game is pivotal first and ten at the 33 Donovan McNabb completes the pass underneath and gets about six and a half to Todd Pinkston the rookie's first catch of the day when the when the Washington Redskins have gone to press you know man coverage he's had a tougher time to throw against in the tight coverage when they brought the blitzes and forced it he's beaten them most of the time with his feet but the majority like we've said it earlier it's going to be going to be short throws and mostly underneath and that has started that was the way he started and that's the way they're going to have to stay with it the whole game second and four on the Redskins 27 Pressure up the middle is picked up, and Darnell Autry rushing, getting the first down for the Eagles to the 22-yard line. I want you to watch. No, look at this. Look at this right back here. They, this is the, what kind of game he thinks is going on right here. You know the sad thing? That's his son, Scott. <laughs> That's his son, Scott. He's going, you know what, Pop? <laughs> this game, pretty darn boring for Robinson. I don't think it's boring for Norm Turner, however. <laughs> Not the least bit. Eagles with a first down on the 22. And McNabb trying to escape and again completes the pass to Chad Lewis. It seems every pass that Lewis catches is a diving catch underneath. Well, we talked about Trey Thomas and how he's taking care of Bruce Smith over there, but he also needs a little bit of help from his friend. And remember, this is Darnell Autry. Now, when this play was over, oh, he just he's just mugging him. Just mugging him over there. When the play was over, Trey Thomas walked over to Darnell Autry. See him right there? Walked right over to him. Giving him a you to man, and that's a great job. That's what you have to do. You know, he powered up the Super Saiyan and got that big chip. 
Second down and three, and here is Autry again off tackle. Darnell Autry, who has been quiet as a running back until this fourth quarter and late stages of the third, and with Bailey making the tackle, gets six yards. And a nice job of Autry of just being patient. He's going to follow Wellburn. Nice job right there by Martin. Good job by the tight end. Again, it looks like Goku there, going Super Saiyan. You know, you just power up, and you get to the point where you just think nobody is going to be able to touch him. And you just foul your blocking, and you just take go where your eyes take it. Audrey gaining 59 yards and scoring a touchdown against Arizona last week. First and goal at the seven. Stanley Pritchett becomes the running back, and McNabb under siege, and down he goes, but there's another flag down. Ray Rhodes dialed up another blitz. Good call by Ray Rhodes. And Bruce Smith right in the middle of it. But there is a penalty marker down. Eagles, remember, from the seven-yard line, first and goal. And illegal hands to the face will go against Philadelphia. Illegal use of the hands to the face, number 76. The penalty is declined. Yeah. Second down. See, they'll, they'll decline that because they, they stopped them, number one. You see inside, he's working against Stubblefield. That's Wellborn. And then Bruce Smith, you know, he gets he's going to make sure he's going to say something to him. Like, I'm going to be there all game long. Either that or he's, you know, give me get a little sugar down there. Because it is, a, you know, it's a, it's a week of Thanksgiving. Yes, it is. Holiday week. Bruce Smith. Give you an idea what he's done in his career. Loss of eight yards, second down and goal, back to the 15. And here is Brian Mitchell with a halfback option pass to McNabb, and the pass is incomplete. Deion Sanders wanted a piece of that. Deion and a little Sanders. razzle dazzle by the Eagles as Mitchell threw incomplete to McNabb. Keep in mind, because he's, you now he hands off and goes to the outside. Watch, the ball's gonna come over the top. Watch the acceleration of Dion. Watch this, he sees it, now break on the football. And because he recognized it and has his recovery, he can do that. Personally, yeah, that's against, this to be a flag, because he was under center and you cannot become an eligible receiver if you're under center. He has to be able to do that out of the shotgun. And Norv Turner is saying exactly that right now. By the way, Brian Mitchell is 5 for 14 as a passer in his career. He's, that's the latest flag I've ever seen. Ineligible receiver. Yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. It. Yeah, he lined up under center. You have to be in shotgun to be able to be an eligible receiver as a, uh, as a quarterback. There he is under center. He's just going to kind of sneak his way around. Keep in mind, Brian Mitchell was a quarterback in college. And what a play by Deion Sanders. Great play by Sanders. Now, the what, penalty is an eligible receiver. What bothers me about it, though, Dick, is it took Norv Turner to have to yell at him to say it. As you said, uh, the latest flag you'll ever see. That was... And uh, Norv wants to decline the penalty. That was Malignan, number five, downfield. He's a T formation quarterback, and he can go, not go downfield to catch the pass. That penalty is declined. They'll take the result of the play, third down. Now the other officials are explaining it to Andy Reid, who understands third and goal coming up from the 15-yard line. The Eagles are in field goal range. For David Akers, you know, I think that he may not have known the challenge earlier in the game, but I think Andy Reid was trying to pull a fast one, almost got away with it, except I think uh, Norv Turner called it to their attention. Third down and goal from the 15, getting rid of it in a hurry. The blitz came up the middle, and Nay Brown... The intended receiver and Sam Shade, the strong safety, trying to get to McNabb up the middle, made him get rid of it quickly. You can credit that man right there, Ray Rhodes. That's a good call by Ray Rhodes because he's drawn a bead on what this quarterback does and what it is. When he gets pressure right up, he's going to get rid of it fast. And most of the time when he's had pressure, he's thrown the ball low. David Akers with a 27-yarder earlier. Now this will be a 33-yard field goal attempt to give the Eagles the lead, and it's good. 
A 33-yard field goal by David Akers, and the Eagles lead again 20 to 17. Bell Sunday is brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. By Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. By Campbell's Chunky, the soup that eats like a meal. And by Ford Ranger, the only compact pickup built Ford tough. Back here at Landover, Maryland, the scoring drive as Donovan McNabb, five of six on the drive as the Eagles regain the lead. There's Albert Connell out for the game with a bruised knee. LeVar Arrington unable to play with a concussion. Now the word on Skip Hicks, he has a strained hamstring, but could play, but we haven't seen him. It's been all Adrian Morrell in the second half. James Thrash returning the kickoff for the Redskins. And the Eagles make the tackle inside the 20-yard line. Jeff George goes back to work for Washington. Here's the lineup next week. Fox NFL Sunday, the pregame show, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. If the Redskins come back and win this game and the Giants beat Arizona, that game will be for first place in the NFC East. So that's the lineup. Game's becoming critical down the stretch. And on the screen pass to Adrian Morrell by Jeff George, a gain of about three yards. Let's check in with James Brown. For some upsets. They had beat Indy. Beat Tampa, Tampa Bay. That was a good job by the offensive line to give Matthew some time. Second down and seven. Here is Jeff George. Can't go anywhere one way and finds wide open early Fryer, but the pass is out of bounds. Fryer got between the seams, and uh, the pass is incomplete, but there was Fryer who was wide open downfield. Well, he was looking downfield. He did find an open guy. Eddie Murray had a great one-handed catch at the end of this thing. <laughs> he rushed it. You know what happened? George rushed himself. But Eddie Murray, sitting there all by himself, ran a great route, was all alone, had beat that coverage on the sideline. And you're going to watch this. Look, just, just look it. Beautifully done. Watch one hand. Bank. This isn't such a hard game. And yes, I'm a kicker. Have the ball back. Not bad for a 44-year-old. Heck, he's older than you are. Not that much. Third down and seven at the 22. Out of the shotgun is Jeff George in his pass. Going up to make the catch. Comes down with it. And a first down. Picking up 18 yards. Now that one is on Jeff George as well. Because Troy Vincent was bearing down on him. And he just fought a little bit of time. Now a few quarterbacks are going to make this. Feet aren't set. He's throwing as he's, as he's trailing to his left. Watch him. Here comes Vincent. Watch him just by time. Watch the feet. No feet. Steps to the outside. Bam. Ball's back right inside. There's Brad Johnson, who is the backup today. And coming back from a sprained knee, could play next week against the Giants. That remains to be seen. Play action. And Jeff George. And the pass is not incomplete. Great hit. Damon Moore put on Stephen Alexander. That one's got to drive Terry Rubisky, the passing game coordinator, and in essence, the offensive coordinator. It's got to drive him nuts because he had him open. All he had to do was throw him and let him run to the catch, lead him a little bit. Instead, he threw it behind him and forced the incompletion. A better throw, and he might still be running. Watch this on the other end. Yes, it, he has to contort himself backwards. It's hard to do. Also, lost in that, David Moore did a good job of making it. Make it to ensure the incompletion. Second down and 10 from the 40 yard line. And a crossing pattern to Larry Centers. And he makes the catch very close to the first down at midfield with Troy Vincent and the linebacker Carlos Emmons covered. Pretty good hit. Pretty good hit, but Larry, not before Larry Centers makes the catch. And now this time, this is this is what you do. You throw the ball, let him. Give him an opportunity to run with the ball after the catch. So much of yards after catch, in fact, the majority of it, Dick, is on the throw. Ask Kurt Warner. You got it. There you see the Redskins leaders. Jeff George with two touchdown passes. Hicks the leading runner. Here comes pressure up the middle on the pass. It goes nowhere. It is batted down, and there is a flag, flag on the huh? play. And Damon Moore putting pressure on the strong safety, just as Sam Shea did. The last time the Eagles had the ball. Must have hit an offensive lineman first before it was batted down. Illegal touch. Is 
it's, it can't hit an offensive lineman. You got him on that. Illegal touching, number 51. That's a five-yard penalty. Still restrains first down. The center, Mark Fisher. So the pass hit him. Here's Jeff George, and he's saying it got hit. Jeff George is going to say he said that he got hit, but it looks to me like. It looks to me like the ball just came out of his arm, uh, off his off his hand. Watch, he's saying that he got hit on that. He didn't get hit on it. He didn't get hit. It was just the ball just flopped out, hit Fisher. Good call by the Fisher. Penalty back to the 45-yard line of the Redskins, and the pass caught by Larry Centers, but goes nowhere. And uh, Jeremiah Trotter right in there to make the play. A couple of yards gained. It will bring up second down and long at the 47-yard line of the Redskins. You know, Jeff, I don't think Jeff George is real comfortable with all the check downs and throwing things underneath. Because a lot of he throws the ball behind a lot of the time. He does. I mean, he's got to give his. It's easy for me standing up here. Heck, I don't, I'm not making a throw. You're the analyst. That's what they say. Here. <laughs> Second down, 13 for the Redskins. We trail the Eagles by three. First place on the line today. And this pass complete to a wide open Irving Fryer. And that's what George does the best. He'll get rid of it in a hurry and throw accurately. And a gain of 20 yards with Vincent on the play. Well, he's not going to get it done unless he can get some good pass protection. And here's Samuels again, getting a little help from Adrian Morrell. And then up front again, nice job. He's able to step and throw. Just sitting down there in the zone. Troy Vincent's work to the outside. And Irvin Fryer read the thing and came back inside. So the Redskins marching to the 33 of the Eagles. And a first down. And again, George looking to throw. Pump fake and going into the end zone and intending for Fryer. The crowd looking for a flag, and there is one down at the five-yard line. Bobby Taylor defending against the former Eagle, Irving Fryer. And another pass interference call will go against the Eagles. You know, Damon Moore is over there saying, look, that ball couldn't have been caught. But it wouldn't have made a difference. They're calling pass interference up, up in the field and saying because of the interference, that's the reason it wouldn't have been able to get the big car. Pass interference. Defense number 20. That's a first down. They call it on Brian Dawkins. Well, it must have occurred earlier than that because I don't know. I'm I'm missing something there. So Jeff George with a completion to Fryer and now a pass interference penalty. Giving the Redskins a first and goal on the three. Trailing by three points. And here is George trying to get it to Larry Centers. Another pick. Tried to pick again with James Thrash on the outside. Trying to sneak Centers out into the flat pick. Jeff George in his third straight start. Watch, you're going to come inside and take him and get him to the outside. Watch. You're going to try to see this. Of course, that's illegal. But they're trying to get him out to the outside. But he, he threw the ball too fast, just threw it too fast. Last time the Redskins had a first and goal, the Eagle defense held, and the Redskins had to settle for a field goal. Second down from the three-yard line. Here is Morrell, and Morrell getting to about the two-yard line. Brandon Whiting cutting through on the play. Brandon Whiting made the tackle, but Hugh Douglas made the play. Hugh, Hugh Douglas did a good job of coming up from the outside and forcing it back inside, which allowed Brandon Whiting to make the play. Well, it was a good play. I don't know how humorous it was. <laughs> You're a piece of work, Stockton. Third down and goal at the two-yard line. George rolling out, looking for a receiver, and the pass flag is down, nearly intercepted by Taylor, and now they're going to call a holding penalty on Taylor, yep. on Irving Fryer in the back. At first and goal at the one, and it is. So the Eagles hit for the third time on either holding or pass interference when they could have gotten out of big trouble. That was great coverage. Did nowhere to go with the football. Watch it right down here. Holding. Number yes. I would say yeah. just, I mean, just a tad. What happened to the tearaway jersey? <laughs> He's lucky he didn't. That was a stretch jersey. 
So it'll be first and goal at the one yard line. Skip Hicks comes in at running back. And Andy Heck is eligible, number 64, as he reports. And here is Hicks trying to cut inside, driven back, second effort, and gets to the two yard line. Paul Grasmanis once again. Let's go all the way back at the start of this on the big pass interference call. They're going to call this one on Brian Dawkins. Let's see what they're going to call. That's. That's what they're going to call right there. You see, it was his hand. As soon as his hand went to, no, it, was, it happened earlier. When his hand first went to his arm and pulled it down, they call that an arm bar. Personally, I didn't like it, but they made the call. Second and goal at the one, and Hicks gets tripped up. Jeremiah Trotter, beautifully done. Nice read, Dick, very decisive, attacking it downhill. That was... Perfect. This is the time where Stephen Davis is needed. This is the time where you say, oh, we're, let's hand the ball to 48. He's the guy who's the power guy and gets downhill running. On the other side of that, though, even if Stephen Davis is in there and Jeremiah Trotter gets that read and attacks it like that, it's going to be tough. So do you think the Redskins miss Davis? Only two first downs rushing today. Yes. Unequivocally. Third and goal from the two-yard line. And this will be a play action set up by George. And George throws it away. What the heck? There's no flag. How do we? Yeah, I know. I don't understand. <laughs> Good this. point by you. And uh, Alexander was in the back of the end zone. So it'll be fourth down. That's great defense by the Philadelphia Eagles. That's just great defense. Nicely done by Emmons. Emmons was the key. See, they had the coverage on the back side. Maybe got held a little bit more again there by Dawkins. But Emmons, because he held him up at the line of scrimmage, he couldn't get off. So Eddie Murray will attempt a 20-yarder to tie the game with 5.46 to go in the fourth quarter. And Murray's kick is perfect. So twice late in the third quarter and here in the fourth, the Eagles defense holds Norm Turner's Redskins and they have to settle for three. But the Eagles like what their defense has done. We're all even at 20. Mitchell's best kickoff return brings it out to the 39-yard line. So Donovan McNabb will take over again. We're all even at 20. Know how to spot a diehard battery owner? Look for their jumper cables. Die Hard, America's most trusted battery. Came up early in offense. Yes. First and ten for the Eagles on the 39. Crowd very much into it. And this pass complete to Chad Lewis. Well, you want to look at the Eagles. They really set the tone for their season on the first play of the first game of the year when David Akers tried an onside kick recovered by the Eagles against the Cowboys and the Eagles went on to win 41 to 14 to start what has been a big turnaround year. I think it spoke volumes about what Andy Reid how serious he was about this season and what he thought of his squad. Second down and nine. Here's Pritchett. Nothing there. And it was Dana Stubblefield on the tackle will bring up third and long for Philadelphia with under five minutes to go in the fourth. The Eagles four and two in the second season of Andy Reid after a 122 and one road record in the previous two years. And the Eagles trying to make it five and two and retain first place in the NFC. You know what I love about this game? Everybody said both defenses were strong. They've shown that. Everybody said McNabb would be the guy. He's shown that. And now it's time for defense to win championships. McNabb out of the shotgun on third and ten. He's going to run, and he gets the first down. And he's still going in Redskin territory. Donovan McNabb with a couple of fakes. A brilliant run by McNabb. And he gets inside the 10-yard line, close to the 5, and a gain of 65 yards. So much in this part of the game, it is transition. You go from offensive player to uh, receiver, rather, to blocker. Watch Nate Brown. Nate Brown did that. That's perfect by Nate Brown. Beautifully done. 
the coverage down the field, the instinct we talked about, which you can't count on, and here it comes, picks up the Nate Brown block, gets down the field, and actually, Carrier, Carrier does a good job. Watch Nate Brown. That's really well done. The intangible that Donovan McNair brings to the game, they call it 64 yards, and here is Autry trying to go off the left side and gets to the nine-yard line. Deion Sanders on the stop. So McNabb with 128 yards on eight carries with 314 to go. Timeout. She will always remember Christmas 2000. How? Have been beating you all day long, which begs the question, why have you not put a spy on him, have accounted for him in the passing game with, a, with another linebacker or defensive back? Second and goal at the seven-yard line, McNabb. And he throws it away. And in the world of recounts, they have now looked at the run by McNabb and decided it is a 54 yard run. I don't think anyone is going to protest that but McNabb setting it up with that big run. Meanwhile as with, you look at Lamar Arrington out of the game with uh, a concussion. He would have been he would have been the spy I believe because he has great he's got a great burst and he's probably the fastest linebacker there. And I would have assumed that maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think so. I think Arrington was the guy. Now, the fact that they haven't done that tells me they didn't put somebody else in that role. Third and goal at the seventh. And now you got one. Motion and now you have one. Delay of the game. Yeah, we're going to show you this one again because now they did go to the spy, and Sean Barber was the spy. Meanwhile, the play clock had run down. We saw it reach zero. Game. Offense, five-yard five penalty. Yard penalty. Remains third down. Sean Barber now is getting into the spy position. See him right here? He's going to drop and settle, and he's going to mirror Donovan McNabb. See him right there? He's going to sit right inside. His eyes are right on him. He's going to mirror him wherever he goes. Now, the key for a spy is to always stay inside. Do not give that quarterback a two-way goal. You take away the inside and you let him and you run him down from inside out. Third down and goal. Pressure up the middle is picked up and McNabb's throw over the head of Chad Lewis, who is wide open in the end zone. Incomplete. And now the Eagles, who had first and goal themselves, will have to settle for a field goal. You know, Boomer Sison and I talk about this a bunch, and it happens with young quarterbacks. The game has to slow down and when the game slows down you make this play and you don't pat yourself on the head you're constant you're, you're congratulating yourself because you make the throw david Akers attempting a 30-yard field goal and the kick is good and the eagles with 301 and now three minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter take the lead once again by three there is no danger, however, as the satellites now expected to smash into Quasi, an uninhabited part of the Australian outback. Scientists say that... Do you, uh... Most of them have just been a dandy improv with Donovan McNabb. And he's done it so well here. Came into the game averaging 7.1 yards a carry. <laughs> I think he has uh, upped that number considerably. Akers kicking off. It's a short end over end kick. Thrash at the six yard line. James Thrash returning for the Redskins. And he is written out of bounds beyond the 25. So Donovan McNabb putting on a show today and the Eagles with under three minutes remaining leading the Redskins by three in the fight for first place 137 passing yards and a career high 120 yards on the ground. Now McNabb as a passer is not there yet but he'll get better when he gets some more help out of his receivers. 
Ike Reese is shaken up for the Eagles. And we'll be right back. Our first lesson this morning will be the sit and stay command. And say sit, stay, sit, stay, sit, stay, sit. This dog's in big trouble. The starter, unable to play today. He's the backup, but that's why Jeff George is there. So let's see what the veteran Jeff George does here. Against a good defense, and that's the key, especially when when those corners have been shutting down your receivers all day. Skip Hicks is the running back. Suffered a strained hamstring, but in there now as a blocker, and George's first pass over the head of Alexander downfield. I like this. See, they right away, they go to man-to-man, -man, and they come with a little bit of pressure inside. And so you're going to take your strength of your defense right now. It's both your corners. Taylor locks up on man-to-man -man outside, on one side. Vincent locks up man-to-man -man on the other side. You bring your safety, you drop them down, you blitz them, and you match up man-to-man -man, um, with Damon Moore, your, your safety on your tight end. So you're saying, okay, you beat us with your arm in tight coverage. Welcome the viewers who witness the Bears and the Jets. This is Jeff George under siege and a penalty marker down. Corey Simon, the rookie, putting pressure on Jeff George. And it's interesting you see a flag thrown as you join us as we will have intentional, intentional grounding. grounding called against Jeff George. That'll be the call. Dick Stockton with Matt Millen and Pam Oliver. And this has been a seesaw game filled with penalties. And mistakes leading to touchdowns. Intentional grounding. Number three. Since the spot of this grounding is greater than 10 yards, the ball will be placed at the spot of the grounding by rule. It's also loss of down. Third down. So it has been a seesaw affair. Redskins leading at the half 14 to 10. And the story of this game, Donovan McNabb with 137 yards rushing. 128 yards rushing, including a touchdown. And Jeff George has thrown for 230 yards passing. Third down and 21. Free play, Dick. Free play, take your shot. Down down against the defense, and they're going for James Thrash, who beats the defense. And it looked like the Eagles secondary had stopped, allowing Thrash to get behind and make the catch. 50-yard play, and the Redskins are back in business. That was very smart by Jeff George. You heard me as we said it, a free play. They didn't stop it, probably on the defense. So take your shot down the field. He hasn't done it all game long. Just ran by the safety, Damon Moore, and because of Jeff George's arm, bingo. Number 53, defense. Sue Douglas. The penalty is declined. The first down. And a first down at the 34-yard line for the Redskins in Philadelphia territory. Well, he said 53, looked like Corey Simon on the inside as well. But watch Jeff George, he knows he has a freebie. He has the freebie, Thrash knows it as well. He gets deep behind the safety, and he knows it feels good. Jeff George has thrown two touchdown passes, one earlier to James Thrash, and this 50-yard catch is his career best. First down at the 30-yard line. The Eagles leading by three in the battle for first place. Swing pass to Adrian Morrell, and he is tackled by Mike Caldwell. That, that's outstanding. I just, I know it's a small play, but I have to show you something for you people out there who like to get a big picture of, of good defense. Troy Vincent, this is about discipline. This is what defense is all about. He knows he has the outside. And so as this ball is thrown, he's going to help Caldwell by taking away the outside. He forces them back in to your help, and you make the play. That's really good defense. And it's been a terrific defensive effort by the Redskins and the Eagles today. Two-minute warning with Philadelphia leading by three. Fox NFL Sunday. Brought to you by IBM. Taking e-business and your business to the next level. My brother's son said he had an idea that would make us rich. That funny-looking kid said that. Said we can use the Internet. The Internet? We ain't... George, it's James Thrash. A completed pass to the 26-yard line with 
under two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter the Redskins have two timeouts remaining there is Eddie Murray third down and two will be coming up Eddie Murray who joined the Redskins a couple of weeks ago he is the fourth place kicker on the team this year and he has kicked two field goals today third down and two and George's pass incomplete he's trying to go to Irving fire and that'll bring up fourth down Troy Vincent on the coverage for the Eagles who have had terrific defense especially when the Redskins have gotten the first and goal Dick that's that's on Jeff George and that ball was thrown again thrown to the spot where he can't make the catch now he's made some great throws James and he's had some flubberuskies yeah. now they're going to go for the field goal attempt and this is going to end up being about a 45 yard field goal 44 yard field goal. well at stake here first place in the NFC East Eagles coming in with a half game lead over the Redskins and the Giants who played tonight at Arizona this right here that's where it's going to be and the Redskins will call a timeout before Eddie Murray attempts his field goal right now let's check in with James Brown for a game break hey, Dick and bat no give up on a part of the Saints take a look at Aaron Brooks as he takes it across that was a result of a pass interference call on the Rams Todd Light Aaron Brooks clutch throws in key situations they're up 31 24 307 left back to Dick and Matt all right, what a game going on there between the Rams and the Saints trying to win four yard field goal attempt by the 44 year old Eddie Murray and this kick off to the right no good so Murray who kicked four Monday night at St. Louis misses here and Andy Reid's Eagles take over with 116 to go that's the game Dick. and the three point lead they have one timeout it's over 116 to go one timeout. This kick and this miss is a victory for the Philadelphia Eagles. And congratulations to Andy Reid and that defense of staying patient all game long, of doing and playing within themselves, and the defense coming up with some great, great defense in the red zone, Dick. Held them to field goals was a difference in the game. Twice in the second half, the Redskins had first and goal and had to settle for field goals. And in a game in which a field goal deciding this one 23 to 20 with 116 to go. The Eagles who dropped a 17 to 14 game earlier in the year. Will retain first place in the NFC. East barring a miracle here. Well they they did something very few people thought they could do. And they did it within themselves. And really, you know what they did? They, they did it on the back of Donovan McNabb. That's what they did. McNabb and the defense, the two things that they said had to come through, came through. And they did it on the legs of Donovan McNabb. Mistakes really setting up this game. A penalty leading to a touchdown, giving the Redskins a lead early on. And then a muff punt. And the turnover, Donovan McNabb hitting Jeff Thomason to tie the game at 7-7. An interception by Champ Bailey. And then Steven Alexander catching the touchdown pass. And then, of course, the fumble by Jeff George. And Donovan McNabb with a 21-yard run for the touchdown with moves like that to give the Eagles a 17-14 lead. And uh, from then on, it was a matter of field goals. And McNabb with 100 and 28 yards rushing today just one yard behind Jack Concanon's single game rushing record in the NFL by a quarterback uh, he broke he broke Randall Cunningham but he's going to keep losing yards here when he takes a knee so he'll go back at least one or one and a half every time but that's going to he's got one more snap after this and that's going to do it so for Jeff George his third start of the year he started against the Cardinals and the Redskins losing there played so brilliantly Monday night against the Rams but today playing at home and Brian Mitchell how sweet it must be for the former Redskin in his first appearance back here in the Redskins lair to come out a winner. I, I think it has to feel good for Brian Mitchell but I think for these Washington Redskins I think clearly clearly Stephen Davis has to be on the field. I go all the way back to the early down in the beginning of the game on a third down third and a short one and they went to play action and tried to throw it out to the tight end of the flat 
that would not have happened with that man in the game. So Stephen Davis couldn't play. And Andy Reid, whose team now has won more games this year than they did in the previous two seasons combined, have taken a full game lead, 9-4 and four on the year. The Giants move into second place, and the Redskins will drop to 7-5. and five. We'll be back here for more as the Eagles stun the Redskins 23-20. We'll be right back.